Yo! What up guys and welcome back to another one. Today, got a treat for y'all. This was probably, honestly, the second most requested video of these shotgun safety videos that I've been doing. Y'all have been loving them and I gotta thank y'all right now. Thank you guys so much for showing your support for these videos. Uh, my main reason for doing these videos, as a lot of you know, is to not only bring entertainment to y'all, to my subscribers, my viewers, because I know what y'all like. We like the same stuff. But to also bring real world situations with shotguns, shotgun safety that is, real world situations that are just that, real world. They happen every day, especially for duck hunters. Today is... A video that is perfect, I mean perfect, for public land duck hunters, any type of uh, duck hunting where you're in the water. It's all about water and shotgun shells today, guys. But real quick before we get started, if you haven't checked out the Ducks t-shirt of the month, this shirt right here is April's shirt, available all April. When you sign up, you get a t-shirt in the mail one every month at a discount rate. So if you're interested in signing up for the Ducks t-shirt of the month, I will link it down below in the description. Go check it out. I'm telling you, every single Ducks t-shirt of the month that I get in the mail every month, it's so nice. I don't have to order anything. I don't have to go shopping for new t-shirts because there was a lot of years that Bobby uh, just had some awful t-shirts when summer came around. But back to the video. So this is what I've done. This is what I've done. Oh yeah, we got a bucket full of water and I put a bunch of shells in here. And what we're gonna do today is we're gonna simulate wet shotgun shells. A ton of you down in the comments in the past couple videos have been like, Bobby, I've always wondered what happens when the powder gets wet? Does it even go off? Is it an unsafe situation? And then I've had a lot of you in the comments been like, Bobby, my dad, I, I can remember one comment in general because I, I'm telling you, I have read every single comment when I ask you guys for video ideas, for shotgun safety video ideas, you guys have really came through. And one comment in particular, I remember, I can't remember your name, I'm sorry, but one of you were like, hey, my dad, uh, shot some uh, wet shells one one day and it was a bad deal i think uh, it just jammed up completely jammed up in the gun i don't think it exploded the gun by no means but i think it jammed up and and what that results into is when a shell gets stuck in there like that a very very unsafe situation if you were to try to fire that gun again so maybe the wad got stuck in the end of the barrel halfway in the barrel if the wad ever gets stuck like that bad bad deal and with wet gunpowder that could probably happen very easily. It's never happened to me. Uh, I'm trying to think if I've ever dropped a shell in the marsh, picked it up, and put it in my gun. I think the only thing I've really ever done um, is probably just use some shells that were getting rained on. So I'd kind of blow them off, throw them in my gun. Uh, maybe they fell in the snow, but I don't think I've ever... I know I've dropped shells in the water before, but I don't think I've ever reached down, picked them up, and put them in my gun. So... This is going to be an adventure for me today. I'm ready to find out exactly what happens if you were to put a wet shell in your gun. So what we're going to do is these have been in the bucket for almost an hour. Actually right at an hour, those shells have been sitting in water. So my theory is, is A, what if you use just completely saturated shells that have been sitting in water for a long time? Maybe you had a box of shells that survived a flood. Maybe your home got flooded. You're like, oh, these ain't bad. I'll just let them dry out and then we'll come back and use them. What if you use them too early before they're dried out? So that's kind of today's theory, a uh, soaked shell. And then what we're gonna do, so we're gonna be firing off a lot, of, a lot, a lot of ammunition today. And then what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna dip a shell in there. So I'm gonna try to act it out like, oops, I dropped a shell. You pick it up, you put it in your gun. We're gonna see the difference between the two or if there is a difference, or if this myth is a myth, or if it's facts. So first test, we're gonna use just a lead shot, very light load. These are basically just the dove loads, skeet loads, and we're gonna drop it in there. Oh man, I dropped it, and you pick it back up. Basically the same thing as if you're in the marsh and you're like, man, let's just go ahead and use that. It wasn't in the water very long. Oh, yeah, the old TriStar isn't doing too good. Oh, goodness. 
Oh, this poor TriStar has literally seen many, many other great days besides the last week of its life. Finally got the bolt closed here. Boy, howdy. I'm telling you, this poor shotgun right here has taken an absolute beating, but she's still trucking. We got the bolt closed. Turn on the GoPro. You know the drill. Now I'm still using the same safety precautions per usual. Guys, I don't like chancing it out here. Shotgun safety, gun safety in general, I've been preaching it. I've needed to preach it more here on the channel. So this is how we do it. <laughs> if you guys are liking these videos, you know what to do. Give your boy a big old thumbs up. You got to hit the thumbs up right now. Let's get this video over a thousand likes in record time, please. And while you're down there hitting that thumbs up button, what's gonna happen? Is it gonna go off and nothing's gonna, nothing's gonna be different? Drop your comment right now. But here we got our twine. Oh yeah, here we go. Got her off safety in three, two, one. She went boom. Well, everything looks very, very normal. Turn off the GoPro there. And uh, yeah, I mean, everything looks normal, right? Now, the only thing different is like usual on these light loads. Remember on the last video, it didn't eject the shell yet again, but it went off. Powder burned pretty good, it looks like. And the bolt closes all the way now. That's good. So just to make sure, I'm gonna do one more. I'm gonna drop uh, this snow goose load from Federal in the water. I'm gonna wait just a hair longer. Oh, you can't find it. Oh, where's it at? You know, there's silt and there's mud. Oh yeah, there it is. So I don't know, it's probably in there maybe 20, 30 seconds. Let's put that bad boy in there. There we go. I don't think dropping your shell in there for literally 10, 5, 20 seconds. I don't think the water gets to soak in there, but don't take my word for it. Do not do that. If you drop shells in the water, I'd probably just leave them or I'd pick them up and, and, and just not use them, you know, because honestly, guys, you never, you never know. That's what today is about. We're about to find out in three, two, one. Oh, I love them big old federal three inch shells. Man, they sound good. I'm telling you what, those federal shells are bangers. Just like the last video, the bigger shell actually kicks the bolt back all the way and ejects itself. The tri I even lubed her up today. I lubed her up. The TriStar is just getting worn out, guys. <laughs> so now we've made the conclusion. You can probably drop your shell in the water, pick it back up within five seconds, maybe 10 seconds, and maybe be okay. But still, I don't recommend it. If you drop your shell in there, don't use it. And it's not only dropping shells in the water, guys. What if it was in a damp, moist, moist area for a long time? What if it was sitting outside in the shade for months, getting rained on, you know? It's gonna soak in there, it's gonna saturate in those shells even more so to simulate just completely wet 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 shells here we go now these shells have been in the water over an hour for certain and uh, I'm excited what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with the lightest load first this one here like we did last time I'm excited I'm excited I love these I love these videos so much gosh darn close her up Oh yeah. So this is pretty much uh, what I've been waiting for is to see if these saturated shells, which I'm sure they, they have to be saturated. They've been sitting in water for over an hour. It's probably right at an hour and a half. So again, if you guys want to drop your comment down below and uh, guess what's going to happen, do so. I appreciate it. And before we go any farther, guys, you still have to give me your ideas. If anywhere in this video, you guys are like, oh, I've always thought about this happening. What would happen if it actually happened? Guys, leave your comments down below. If they're a good video idea, just like this one, this video came from one of y'all. If they're a good video idea, guys, drop it down below. I'm serious, I read every single comment. So, please do me a favor, and all of us a favor, if you have a good idea, it could be such a good idea that you could actually save somebody's life. I mean, honestly, just like the mud in the barrel, it went boom. That might save somebody's life one day. So, just think about that. It's important. But here we go. Got the string ready to go in three, two, one. 
Uh oh. All right, slight delay there. The bolt <laughs> wouldn't close all the way. Who would have known, right? So here we go again. Three, two, one. I heard a click. I heard a click and a slight burn, I think. I know you guys probably couldn't hear that. We're going to have to. Let's watch it the. Uh, let's watch the GoPro uh, footage real quick. And I figured I'd see a strike here on the primer, and there's barely a dent at all. Like, there's just, it barely scratched it. Ditch that shell. Huh, that's weird. Now I'm a little confused. I don't think the firing pin hit it hard enough. So, I'm kind of wondering what happened there. So, we're going to go ahead, put in a regular shell there. That's, that is a dry one. Reason being, I just tried the same shell twice. I could hear the firing pin click. The first time it sounded like it sizzled. But when I look at the primer, it's not even struck barely. So, let's try a normal shell real quick. It's clicking. All right, so we had a bunch of technical difficulties there. The gun, uh, she was already all jammed up. So I just gave her a good lubing. Put a ton of lube in there. She's ready to go. She's oiled up. Let's retry this. So, first, saturated wet shell it went off okay now we're talking see i thought it was the shell just being wet and turns out it wasn't the firing pin just wasn't striking it hard enough because like i said this tristar has been put through the ringer hmm didn't eject it like usual Looks like there's a little more residue in there, if you can see that, but not a bunch more. Those have been in there an hour. Drop a comment down below. Is that long enough for them to be in the water? Is that long enough for that shell to become saturated enough? Let me know down below if you guys have any type of recommendations for this. Uh, I'm kind of baffled. I figured sitting in water for that long, it would have been a no-go. So what we're gonna do, pull out our next shell. Okay, well, there we go. Let's go ahead and load her up. Let's see how she does. This is the Federal Snow Goose load. Put her on in there, get in there, oh yeah. And then, bang. I don't know. I kind of expected a different outcome to be quite honest. I mean, do I need to be saturating these shells a lot longer? I figured that was gonna be plenty of time. So, Federal Snow Goose Load, been in the water for probably an hour and a half. It went off. That sounded pretty darn normal to me. Those Federals, I'm telling you, when they go off, they go boom. <laughs> Got a lot of water everywhere. Whole inside of the chamber is all watery. But like usual, it did eject the bigger shell. I am really surprised, y'all. I figured... We would have had some fit, some some sizzling, some smoking, you know, from that powder being wet. Huh. But honestly, I'm not bummed out because this is what I planned for. I planned for this right here. That's why I brought different brands of ammunition. You know, they might be sealed up tighter than the next. You know what I'm saying? So, next show on duty. Oh, three and a half. Oh yeah. Got a little treat for you all. We're saving that till last. Where's my other shell at? All right, right here. Winchester Super X. Buy these at Walmart. This was all I ever used to shoot is because I used to just buy all my ammo from Walmart. So this is your everyday Walmart ammunition. Uh, nothing special about it. This has also been in the water for almost an hour and a half probably. In three, two, one. Nope. Yet again, the bolt didn't close all the way. I'm telling you, that poor TriStar has seen many, many better days. So, Winchester Super X soaked for an hour and a half. Three, two, one. Ooh. I heard the firing pin just go chink. I mean, I completely heard that firing pin go and nothing. Let's put her back on safety. Let's open this bad boy up. You know me, I got to use my handy dandy pick there she is you can tell that primer struck but not really hard huh i'm gonna try her one more time three two one nope 
heard it, I heard the firing pin go off yet again. So I think that's a telltale sign. This is our first one to not fire. So now, in the name of science, it's all about trial and error. So now I'm going to put in the same shell, but dry. This one right here. So that's the same shell, but dry. Elimination. Process of elimination. Here we go. So dry shell. Three, two, one. Firing pin yet again. Well guys, just did some investigating. And what it looks like is the one wet shell, the saturated shell that did go off, just completely tore up the inside of that chamber. And right where the firing pin is, right, right where the striker is, it's just nasty and muddy and wet. So I cleaned it off a little bit. But here we are, I'm gonna try it yet again. This is the dry Winchester shell, trial and error, firing pin. Oh boy, howdy. So what I had to do is I just basically cleaned the inside of that chamber as good as possible. Clicked it, clicked it, and uh, it seems like it's, uh, I've got it to fire a little better just by dry firing it. So let's see if it works here. This is still the dry Winchester. There it went. Okay, so that answers my question, is the prior shell that we did, the first saturated shell, yes, it went off, that was the Federal, was obviously so wet and nasty that it gummed up that firing pin and everything. I just had to go through HE double hockey sticks to try to get that thing to shoot a dry shell. Now, I had to clean it. I had to get all the water out from that firing pin. You know, there's that little hole where the pin comes out. It was completely gummed up with dirt and water. Basically just jammed with mud. I guess that's one thing to, uh, that I figured out is if you do uh, end up using a saturated shell and it goes off, your gun's probably going to be pretty nasty and it may not work anymore until you clean it. So I'm just going to cut to this chase here and we're just going to go ahead and put in the three and a half. Because honestly, I feel like I'm going to get the same results no matter what shells I use. If I use a saturated shell, it's just going to obliterate the inside of that chamber. It's going to gum it up and that firing pin, it ain't going to want to shoot. It ain't striking the primer hard enough because it gets so gummed up. So what I've done is I just cleaned it again. This three and a half inch have, has been in the water for probably two hours by now. So it should be plenty wet. Oh, you know how we go here? Oh, look, it won't even. Oh, there we go. Barely fits in there. So. This will probably be the final test on the saturated shells, just because I think the main thing is uh, once that saturated shell goes off, if it does, it's a really iffy deal if they go off or not. I mean, honestly, I'd say the longer they sit in water, the less likely they're probably gonna go off. I don't think anything really unsafe happens, uh, you know? I think the only thing unsafe could happen is a partial discharge of the ammo and the wad gets lodged in your barrel. You know what I'm saying? I think if that happened, that would probably be the most dangerous situation. But I know there's a lot of you out there that have encountered this problem. If you've seen something different happen other than what you've seen here today, drop a comment down below and let us all know. Because it's all circumstantial, you know. Circumstances are different every single hunt, every, every day ammunition how dry they are how wet they are you know this is the saturated three and a half inch shell and a three inch chambered shotgun three two one nothing but a click now you can see that primer got hit pretty good not really hard but pretty good could be a result of it being wet the powder being wet like we've been talking about that one struck it pretty good it struck that primer really good actually we're gonna give her one more go here. We're gonna try the same shell. Because yet again, I ratcheted that bolt back and forth. I dry fired it a bunch, cleaned that pin out as good as I could. So, here we go again. I just wanna make sure, what, it, what, what I'm doing here, let, let, let me find my words. Before we fire it here, what I'm trying to do is eliminate the possibility that it's the gun's fault. Instead of it being the wet shell going off. You get what I mean? So, here we go, three, two, one. All firing pin, baby. 
So, in the name of science, yet again, process of elimination. Uh, I know the striker hit that last one really good on the three and a half inch saturated shell. So I'm gonna put in a dry load yet again like last time. I wanna make sure that is, is the shell and not the gun. I could probably fire this one up close, but like I said, I'm not risking it for the biscuit. I'm staying safe, y'all. In three, two, one, all firing pin. Okay, so off camera here, I had two successful discharges with dry ammunition. I got the three and a half inch saturated back in there. The gun should be working fine. There it is. Okay. Well, that uh, shows process of elimination is key. You have to do that. If I would have stopped, honestly, we would have all thought that, yeah, the three and a half inch shell is saturated and just not wanting to shoot. <laughs> but look at that bad boy there. Didn't want to eject like usual. It's all compressed in there. What I've gathered here is... Um, yeah, it's all circumstantial, man. Um, it's hard to tell. One thing I do know is up until today, I had no issues with the TriStar actually firing, you know? I've had problems with it ejecting, but never on any of these videos. And for a long time, even when I hunted with the gun years and years ago, I never had trouble with it going off. As long as there was a shell in that chamber, it would go off. Now, I had a lot of trouble uh, chambering, cycling a new shell, but this is definitely a new issue. And it's due to the water. I would guarantee it. Uh, those shells are getting wet in there. I'm not sure how much the powder is actually getting wet, but they're getting wet enough to where it's just destroying the inside of that bolt. That firing pin's getting really gummed up. And the only way for me to get it to fire again is to clean it out, ratchet it back and forth a lot, dry fire it, dry fire it, clean it out with a towel, blow it out the whole nine yards, fire some dry loads through it, and then put a wet shell back in it, therefore results in the same cycle repeating itself. So if I found anything today, you know what? Your shell might go off if it's wet. It could be really unsafe, who knows? But in the end, if you do shoot these wet, saturated shells, and if they do go off, you're gonna have a very, very dirty gun. If your gun keeps firing them, that is. I mean, like I said, I've had no issues with the TriStar actually firing a shell until today, and it's really been a pain in my butt. So I think that's the biggest finding of this whole thing is these wet shells, they might go off, they may not, but when they do, your gun is basically destroyed. Now, I know, I know guys, believe me, I want some mayhem too. I mean, I was really hoping that the gun was just gonna go and something crazy was gonna happen. But like we found, the TriStar still lives on for a reason. And that reason might be because the TriStar is just a bad boy, or there's just different outcomes to what we think might happen. But nonetheless, that's why these videos are here, is for myself to remember, but more importantly, for you all to remember and, and to share this knowledge with your, with your hunting buddies, with your shooting buddies, with your kids, with, your, with anybody. Share this information. If you ever see somebody picking up a wet shell, just be like, hey man, here, take one of mine. If you're out of shells here, take some of my shells. Don't let anybody use wet shells and please don't ever use wet shells. It's just not a good idea. This really isn't a good idea, but that's why we use twine and stand behind the truck. It's because I try to do these videos safe. So yet again, let's get this video over a thousand, two thousand likes. I don't know, let's see how high we can get it because I got more on the way. I got a lot of these brainy little ideas that me and you, a lot of us waterfowl hunters, shotgun shooters in general, have always wondered about what would happen, what if? So if you guys have a video suggestion, be sure to drop that bad boy down below. All your guys' positive comments, you know, I appreciate them so much. There's a lot of trolls out there, and uh, hello to all you trolls, but a big hello 
to all my positive people out there. Thank you guys for always uh, dropping your positive uh, comments down below. A lot of times I need those. They're uplifting and it tells me, hey, you guys like the content. I'm doing this for a good reason. So I'm going to continue to do it, darn it. But remember, guys, before we get out of here, if you guys want to sign up for the Ducks T-Shirt of the Month, this one right here is April's T-Shirt of the Month. Yep, there's a different design every single month, and it arrives right to your pretty little mailbox. So if you want to sign up, I will link it down in the description below. But honestly, guys, thank you guys for being here so much. Without my audience, without my subscribers, without your guys' input, we wouldn't be out here making shotgun safety videos that could possibly save somebody's life, if not multiple person's lives, one day or multiple days, you know. I've got a lot of questions from a lot of people saying, Bobby, are you sure you're going about this the right way? And I believe I am. Showing you, when you see something happen, it's going to stick with you a lot longer than me just telling you guys, hey, don't do that. If I go out there and I show you what might happen, it's going to stick with not only me, but you guys for a very long time. So I thank you guys, each and every one of you for being here. Again, hit that like button. Let's get this video rolling. Subscribe if you haven't, guys. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.